Have you ever wondered why some businesses fail and some succeed beyond their wildest dreams? What actually is the difference between these two types of businesses? Is it really that the businesses that excel at the highest level just have better ideas than those that fail? The fact of the matter is, no. And so today, that's exactly what I'm going to cover in this video. I'm going to share a couple of insights that I've come to and that I've discovered about the business world that will help basically anyone start a business that will actually last. Because oftentimes we'll see on the internet, oh, I'm an entrepreneur and I'll do this and I'm going to do that. But how many of those people actually survive past that two year mark or even past that five year mark? And so today, that's what I really want to share is how do we create a business that's generational? What actually makes a generational business? Oftentimes, I'll talk a lot about mindset and how you know poverty is bad and riches are good, right? And I don't, I'm not going to cover the entire scope of why being rich is more godly than being poor. Um, I don't have time to go into all that just for as a very simple foundation. All of the things are God, all the things that are God, God desires, right? Riches, abundance, love, freedom, peace, um, power, all of the things that are of God's character, God desires and God hates sin. So that means anything that falls short of him, he hates. And so that's why we had to be covered by the blood of Jesus because it's the perfect sacrifice. So it can be the substitution. But one of those things that would fall underneath that realm or that umbrella is poverty. Poverty falls short of the glory of God. Therefore, he would hate it. And therefore, it is impossible for him to desire it for us. However, a religion will very much desire that of you because it makes you easy to control. Okay, I digress. Let's talk about business. Let's talk about creating something for yourself and your family that will continue to pay you and yourself and your generations for exactly that, generations to come. Okay, so first and foremost, one of the things that we have to realize is that the point of a business is to make money, right? And that's, I think that's clear that the point of a business is to make money. That's not the purpose of a business though. The purpose of a business is not to make money. But Jared, what are you talking about? In a capitalist society, that's the only thing that matters. Increase profits, decrease costs. Okay. If we're talking on the larger scale, going public and all of that, it's going to be a different conversation. I'm talking about small, medium-sized businesses, even large businesses that have no desire to go uh, public. And the reality is, is that all of those businesses pre-going public didn't just get into business to make money, right? They solved the problem. And a lot of those businesses solved the large enough problem that people said, oh my goodness gracious, yes, absolutely. I'd love to invest in that. That's a fantastic idea. Cool. So here's our framework. Our framework and our foundation is we create a business for the purpose of serving people, especially us as Christian entrepreneurs, us as Christians, as those of us who want to transition out of the nine to five force, those of us who are working professionals and want to create something that we can ultimately give to our family and our children and that we can you'll know, slowly phase into, right? So what does God call us to do? First and foremost, love him. And second, love thy neighbor as you love thyself. Okay, how do we love thy neighbor as we love thyself? Well, we serve them, right? So serve God, serve people. It's very simple, very simple commandments. Anybody can do them, right? Serve God in a way that pleases him and serve the people that he's called you to serve in a way that pleases him. Simple. As long as we're pleasing God, we're on the right track. Okay, cool. So how do we actually do this? So oftentimes this is how people create a business, right? I'm going to share with you the wrong way to start a business. I, Jarrett, say, okay, I'm really good at sales. Um, you know what? I really like to teach and, um, you know, I, I, I like to teach high ticket sales and I, th I think this is going to be a good route for me. And so I go and I start this business, this coaching, this sales coaching business. So I develop all my stuff. I make all my stuff. And then I go, okay, great. I have my coaching programs. I have my uh, courses. I have my eBooks. Now let me go take it to the market and see who buys it. Okay. A lot of people would say, well, Jared, what's wrong with that? I don't understand. Here's what's wrong with it. 
at no point did I think about what the market would want. Let me rephrase that because oftentimes it's a little bit, um, it's a little bit out there. Like, what do you mean the market? So the market are the people that you're called to serve, right? The key word there is people. So whenever we're looking at the market, we have to look at the market as individual people, right? So yes, all of these things I love to do. I do love to, to I do love to coach. I do love to cheat. I'm excellent at sales. I'm one of the best in the world. If I make my product about me and I take it to the world, it might do well. It might also crash and burn. Okay? Why? Because I made this for me. I monetized and packaged up a hobby and my passions and I took it out to the world. And not a second did I think about how can I serve the people who are out there? Now let me share with you the right way. Jarrett says, okay, what are people experiencing? Like, what's a problem that I can solve? God, what is a problem in this world? Like, what are the problems that the people that you've called me to serve are facing? Poverty. Wow. Okay. So what does poverty prevent? Well, poverty prevents freedom. What else does it do? It encourages bondage and slavery. What else does it do? People kill one another for it. It's absolute depravity. It's a, a depression that most can't comprehend. If you've never been in true crushing poverty before, those of us who have can speak to that, to be in crushing poverty. Okay, why is this important? Because now I can start hearing what these people might be saying. I can start thinking about what these people might be thinking. I can feel and put myself in their position as to what they might be feeling. Okay, so if I can hear, think, and feel what a real human is thinking, feeling, and hearing, that's the problem. Oh, okay, well, what are they saying? Dude, I hate my nine to five. Like, I, I hate my boss. I don't get to see my kids, like, Bro, we barely make enough money to survive. Like, I'm getting killed in taxes. Like, I'm not even sure if I'm ever going to be able to buy a house. And the house that I do, or if I do have a house, like, I'm not sure how much longer I'm going to be able to keep it because inflation keeps going up, but my pay is not moving up commensurate with it. What am I going to do? Even deeper. Dude, where do I even start? Like, what? Even if I pick up two or three jobs, like, it's not going to be enough. And what, I'm going to sell all of my time and never see my kids for pennies? What do I need to do? Deal drugs? Now we can create a message. Okay? Because we want to build products, services, and solutions from the market first. So we want to what are people saying in the market? That way we can create a message, right? It's actually more important to design your message first. Design your message before your product. Why? Because if you can figure out the message, it's pretty simple to figure out a product to sell. There's a lot of different ways. I'm going to open up some awareness uh, in a second, but I want to I want to stay I want to stay on this message first. So by having an effective message, we're going to be able to communicate to people's hearts. We're going to be able to speak into their hearts so that when our advertising or when we go out and, and do a you know, DM outreach or direct message outreach or whatever route we're going to go, when our message is out there, somebody can look at it and resonate with it. They can go, wait a second, what did you just say? Hold on. Is this a sign? This is this is a better description of the problem than I thought that I was feeling. Wait a second. That, those are words that I said. Wait a second. That's what I feel. 
wait a second, that's what I think. Hold on, let me figure, let me find out more. Because if we can figure out the problem and create the right message, well, guess what? We have the inspiration of God, right? What is, what is the Bible? It's the message, right? It's the message from God. And so if we have, if we're thinking about the people that we're called to serve, and now we have the message that we can serve them with, the product and the solution, God is going to give that to us. How do I know this? Because every single person on earth has gifts, talents, skills, and passions. We all do. There's no one on earth that wasn't born with anything. Right? We want to talk about physical, I'm like, okay. I'm not talking about the, the 0.000001% of people, right? I'm talking by and large. Most of us have these four things. We just don't know what to do with them because we didn't create them. What does that mean? Did we create our gifts? Did we create our talents? Did we create our skills? And did we create our passions? Well, no. Okay. Who did? Oh, that's right. God did. So do you think he might know how they work? And do you think he might know how they work together? A cord of three strands is not easily broken. Do you think he understands relationship? What was the first thing that God ever created in the physical realm? God created the heavens and the earth. Hold on, let's rewind. God created the heavens and the earth where the invisible can interact with the physical. Wait a second, that's a relationship. God created the heaven and the earth. Oh, wait a second. That's another re relationship. It's expression and meaning. Interesting. In the physical realm, this is our expression. All of our meaning comes from God. You think God understands relationship? You think God can take your gifts and your passions and create something where you're going to love to wake up every single morning to go and do? And at the same time, it's going to serve those people that you're called to serve in a way that pleases God and change the world. You don't even have to think of it like 7 billion or 8 billion people. You can change the world around you. You're changing the world in the places where those, where the people you're called to serve have interacted with you and your products and your services and your solutions. Oh yeah, you've changed the world. Congratulations. You didn't have to save all 8 billion people. It's only Jesus' job to save. You're only called to serve those you were called to serve. Let me let you off the hook right now, okay? Only Jesus saves. It's not your fault. As a Christian, you feel like you need to go out and save people. It's not your fault. It's also not your job. It's not my job either. I'm called to serve the people that I'm called to serve. That's my job. Let Jesus save. Let Jesus save. That's his job. He's a big boy. He's got it. He's got it. Leave that to him. And fulfill your mission. I'll tell you what. Your mission isn't to save people. It is to serve them, though. And so now... Right? We can, we invite God and we invite Jesus and we invite Father and Holy Spirit in every single one of these steps. Father, what's the problem that you're calling me to solve in the world so that I can solve a problem that pleases you? What does a servant do? 
A servant solves problems. That's the purpose of a servant. Let me give you an example. Here's the purpose of a servant, right? The king's hungry. What does a servant do? Brings him food. Why? Because the hunger is in the way of the king's pleasure. The door is closed. The king wants to enter into his home. What does the servant do? He opens the door. Why? Because the door is in the way of the king's pleasure. The king desires water. What does the servant do? He goes and he brings the, the, the king water and will even pour it into his mouth if, if the king so desires. Why? Because the king desires to no longer be thirsty. He desires his pleasure. And thirst is in the way of his pleasure. You see, to be an entrepreneur and to be a business owner is to be a servant. What was it that Jesus said? Those of you who desire to be greatest of all must become servant of all? There is no greater form of servitude than entrepreneurship. Because you're not just increasing the pleasure of the Most High, of our Father, of Jesus, of Holy Spirit. You're also putting people in a position that they can then please Him better. What's the pleasure of God? To have a relationship with His children. Why did Jesus die on the cross? Relationship. It's the purpose of all things. Relationship. Let me tell you the big, the, I'm going to give you a system right now and change your life. It will change your life if you, if you really catch what I'm saying. Okay, in the beginning, God created the heaven and the earth, right? First relationship. God created the heaven and the earth. What happened next? And the earth was without form and void. And darkness was upon the face of the deep. It became without form and void. That word was there in Hebrew is became as. So it became. Satan came and attempted to destroy the earth. He attempted to destroy the first relationship. Okay? Moving forward. What happens next? God creates man. And Adam and Eve go to the tree. Mind you, here's, a, here's something really interesting. I'm going to go down a rabbit hole here, but stick with me. I think a lot of us have this idea that like God made Adam and Eve and then like just placed them right next to the tree. Like that is what happened. That God created Adam and Eve and then he placed them right next to the tree. Here's the problem with that though. If you look at the maps, the reality is, is that Adam was by the water. And the, gar and the tree was in the center of the garden. We can safely assume that the water, the sea, in which he named all the sea creatures, was on the outer edge of the garden. What does that mean? If you looked at the, a map of what Eden like represent, like the, the land mass of Eden, they walked for hours. They walked for hours to get to that tree. Which means they ignored all the rest of the abundance. Here's what's interesting. This is complete theology. I like I can I could probably prove it, but I'm not going to go into all the doctrine as to why today. I believe that the first sin was Adam and Eve desiring to go to the tree of the knowledge of good and evil. Except they were covered. There was a covering. Right? So they had sinned. They had fallen short of the glory of God, but there was covering. They were covered and protected in Eden. It wasn't until they ate from, right, the idea of infidelity, of cheating, right, the penetration of, to have someone inside of you or to be inside of someone else in the covenant of marriage. That's why it was, they had to eat in order for it to come inside. And then they fell. Here's what's interesting, though. Who caused the fall? 
That's right. Satan caused the fall. So what happened? God created a relationship between himself and his image, right? And with man, with human. And then what did, he, what did Satan do? He made them without form and void. And there was darkness upon the face of the deep. Really, really interesting how business is servitude. And as a result of business, you glorify God. You become servant of all. You also happen to become more like God. And you're also going to attain riches and fame and glory, all the things that you can use to point back to God. Well, all this is as a result of him. I didn't come up with any of these ideas. This is exactly what happened in my business. I, Jarrett, created a high-ticket sales course. I called it Dark Art Sales. I did not think about the market. I said, I'm going to make this because I think I'm good at sales. I never released it. Because it's garbage. Why? Because it's not about the people. It was about me. And so I created a new sales course that is 100% about the people, about the market. It's called Saleception. And I'll be releasing it soon. And it follows the biblical model of how God solves problems. Because you see, people aren't puzzles. People aren't ATMs. Everyone deserves transformation. It's what Jesus went to and died on the cross for. Transformation in relationship. And so, all of this to say, when we create from the beginning, we actually think about God's people and the people that we're called to serve and invite him every step of the way. We can create a product that is beyond our wildest imaginations. You see, toward the beginning of this video, I said that I was one of the, I'm one of the best in the world at sales. I am. Not because of me, though. Because of God. Because of the way that I have modeled my walk and my desires after him and how to serve people. Because ah, sales feels so icky. Sales feels so icky. I don't care who you are. Sales feels icky if you do it the traditional way. I do it God's way. It's people first. It's relationship first. And it's all about them and their success. I'm just here to help. And so I want you to keep these things in mind as you go about designing and starting your business. The first thing I need to do is find a problem that people are experiencing. What are they thinking, saying, and feeling? Okay, then I need to create my message and then my product and invite God every of the way. Okay, I pray that you're blessed. I'm going to do more content like this, uh, especially this coming year. I think it's important not just to have the mindset, but also to have the access and the ability, the awareness of the truth and what's around us in order to be able to then create some of these things. And oh, I want to give this to you because I said that I would. If you struggle to find like to create a, a product or a solution or a service, right? There are so many people out there that already have a product or service that you can join their affiliate program or like talk to them about what's called a joint ventureship, right? Where you like partner with them and you sell their product to an audience. So even if you want to serve people, but you don't know how to do it, well, there's plenty of people out there that will help partner with you. Like for me, my partnership, like my, my affiliate, right? I'll pay you 50%. My sales course is going to start at $2,000. That means everyone who buys it, it's going to put $1,000 in your pocket. The cool thing is I 10X guarantee my stuff. So if they can't make $20,000 off of it, I'll give them their money back. Like I'm not worried about it because I'm so confident in the system that God has given me and I've run it through the ringer as well. So I, 
I can, I can go in and tell you about how I've helped people go from you know, doing $100,000 a month to the next day doing $50,000 in seven minutes. Right? I can go into all of that. But look, I want you to think about what problem, like what's the problem that God wants me to solve? Ask him. He'll tell you. Write it. Just start writing. It'll come. What's the message that I'm going to carry for these people? There's a way out. That there's more money. There's a, there's, there's a way out of bondage into freedom. You don't have to be a slave. You don't have to serve another master other than God. Because guess what? Business allows you to just serve God. Right? There's a lot of different ways to go about doing that by doing that type of stuff. Right? If you're looking for some books and you're already on your entrepreneurial journey, I'm going to link them below. This is a great book to figure out your messaging. It's called The 16 Word Sales Utter by Evaldo Albuquerque. Fantastic. This is a this changed the game for me. This changed. This is actually this book gave allowed me to create the product I was always purpose to create. And then my second book, I have all these post-it notes on here because I when I read, I like take notes and on my thoughts that come in. This is called Boss Moves by Myron Golden. I'll also put my link below. Help my brother. Ugh. I'll also put my link below. Um, I will make an affiliate commission off of these. I don't really care if you use my affiliate link or not, though. Like, you guys should just get this book or like these books because they're incredibly powerful. So, whether or not you want to use the links or whatever, I don't really care. It doesn't matter to me. Just boss moves and the 16 word sales letter. These would these will change the game for you. My friends, I pray that you're blessed. I pray that you are mighty and stand firm and strong on this entrepreneurial journey because there are going to be people who come after you. Let me word it differently. There are going to be people who desire to make your earth without form and void. When you step out on this journey, they're going to do everything they can to make sure that your earth is without form and void. Guess what? What happens after, after the earth is made without form and void? The Spirit of God moved across the waters. And God said, let there be light. The first solution. I pray that you're blessed, my friends. That your riches are multiplied. That your abundance is unimaginable. That your wealth is strengthened and your prosperity generational. By the blood and the mighty name of our King of Kings and Lord of Lords, Jesus the Christ. Take care and I'll see you on the next one. Bye for now.